Welcome to day three of, uh, of this LARP school. Today will be uh, a lot about character, how to create them, how to play them, how to portray them, how to use them, how, to, how you as an organizer can use them and everything. So, failure number five, which I will start talking about, uh, is uh, about character creation. Who's going to create the character for the play? Is it the organizer or the player? Well, as all failures, it can be both. On the, on the maximum, if we turn it all the way up, we have the organis organizer creating play the characters for the players. If we go down on the minimum, we'll have the players create their own characters without any involvement of the, uh, the organizer. <coughs> so first, a, a quick explanation of, of, of how, uh, what this really means. Let's start at the very, very basics. A LARP needs characters. Without characters, we don't have a LARP. It will be an empty room, an empty forest, and just standing there. A character can be sort of everything. A character can be, be, be the poor man. It can be the, the, the very energetic young child, or it could be the, the cat, or it could be the door even. But it's a character of some kind, having some kind of agenda. Eric will talk a little bit about this later on, and he doesn't agree on a door as a playable character. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, The character needs to be created in some way, sometime by someone. Otherwise, it won't be a character. It can be that we show up at the LARP, and the LARP could even start and we don't have characters, but then we create them during the LARP. But it needs to be created. Otherwise, it's not a character. And uh, the character isn't just the physical representation. It isn't just the, the, what he and she is. It's also the relations to others. I now have a relation to you. I'm standing here, you're sitting there. Later on, we may be playing something. And then we have another relation. So this is really, really important when creating characters. It's not only what you are, it's also what you think about others, what you think about yourself. Like that? Better? Yeah. There is tape on the floor, you can see where you should stand. Oh, I should stand in this. More behind that. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> No, sorry. Uh, <coughs> and you also need, I missed one quick point here, you also need goals during, uh, during the LARP. You need something to do. Otherwise, it can be rather boring <coughs> if you don't have anything to do. A question? No? <coughs> so the failure, if, if we turn it up to the maximum, as I said, the organizer has created the character and the player is handed the role. Then the player has to interpret the character and act it out. That's when you turn to the maximum. The player has no involvement in the creation of the character. And on the minimum, the player creates the character and with no involvement of the organizer. The organizer has no idea what the, what the players are going to what kind of characters the player is going to play. We both have, have uh, pros and cons, of course, of this, as I will talk about later. Uh, examples of fader max, on maximum. When we turn it up to max, we have, for instance, Family Anderson is very, very close to maximum. You were handed your character. You got a character cheat, you had your, your, what goals you had, what relationships you had to your siblings. You knew what you were going to do. It might, it's not really on maximum, but it's very, very close. Because you can go to extreme, and you will be also be handed the clothes. I would also tell you as the organizer, yeah, you're going to play like this. You're going to play exactly like this. You need to have a small limb when you walk, or you must. You can go so, so extreme in this way, in, in a way that the, the, the we would soon not be talking about LARP, but instead be talking about theatre. Because you will have 
all the already written lines for you. But, yeah. An example of this was Carolus Rex, that uh, uh, it was Johanna talking about that yesterday, I think. The uh, submarine live, the space submarine live LARP uh, in, in, in Sweden. Then they were handed these Swedish Space Army uniforms that they would have to carry. They got all these things for them. So this is very, very close to, even more close up to the maximum on the fader. An example of fader minimum. We have an example we have played here. When our destinies meet, it's very close to minimum. Because you only, the only thing you got was this little sibling or neighbor or the prostitute or whatever. It is very, very close to minimum. And then you as the player, or you as players as a, as a group, did the characters together. Create the characters together. But you could go even further down. You could not even have been handed that slip of paper. Maybe it was just blank paper, blank sh nothing. Yeah, yeah, go on. Create a character. And I could ask all of you to create a character now, and then we'll go out and LARP. But it could lead to a problem, though. If we don't know, if you don't sort of talk together, if you, you don't try to be a group together, and if I don't give you the information, I will talk about this a little bit later on, that it could be a huge problem. <coughs> so you need as a group, and that was what our destinies meet did very well when you created, you sat down in a group and started talking, yeah, if I'm your sibling and if you are, and then we created the relationships at the same time as we created the actual characters' thoughts and ideas. So, is there a neutral fader in this? How to create it? No. I say there's no neutral fader in this. You, as an organizer, you have to decide. You have to choose how to do this. Because we need characters and relations to others. If, if, if I say, if we say, yeah, let's have a LARP, let's go out and play. We need to, either I choose not to create your characters, and then you have to. Or I can say, yeah, I want you to play this and I want you to play that. It's no neutral fader here, but you can choose to put it in between. You can create together, but as a default, default is rather better than neutral. It's <coughs> neutral we have in the middle. Yeah, sorry, default fader. There is no default for this fader. So pros for, for failure maximum. If we put it up in maximum, it gives you as an organizer more control over the game. Because you know the setting. You will know who will be there. You will know what type of characters that will be there. And you, it gives you the control over the characters and the relationship as a storytelling tool. I can use, I as an organizer, or you as an organizer, can use the characters to act out against each other because you know that this character has this goal you know that this character has this goal you know they're gonna clash and you can use that as a storytelling tool and it's easier to get the players to follow your ideas and thoughts if you have a, if you have an agenda for the game if you want to tell something it's a little bit easier <coughs> for you to do this if you can create the characters because then you control more of the, of the whole play, of the whole LARP. You, the more you as the organizer have control, the more you can s sort of aim the game to end up where you want it to end up. And you can all make sure that all parts of the role is necessary for play. And, that is necessary, and all that is necessary for the play is covered in the roles. What do I mean with that? Yeah. If, if you create a character, you get a lot of background, of course, but some of it might be useless for the game. Some of it might not even be used. You have created, you've put in a huge amount of effort as a player. You've sitting down 120 hours just writing your background story, and then you don't have use for it. It might give you a better experience as a player during the game, of course, but you might feel a bit 
trick. You might feel a bit left out because you have done this huge research and it turned out useless. And as an author, when you write it, you make sure that what is necessary for the players to know in the game, you hand it to them. And also, what we need in this play, what we need in this LARP, for instance, Family Anderson, we need conflicts. Because otherwise it would just be five persons sitting and saying, yeah, I want this house, yeah, you can take it, I want this, yeah, so, and after two minutes it would just be, yeah, done, okay, fine. Not a very interesting game. So, what we, what, when writing Family Anderson, I put in what is necessary for the play, for the LARP. I put in the conflicts in the characters. So in that way, we covered the necessaries, necessary things to get the, the LARP. And what are the cons for the Fader Maximum? Well, players might interpret the roles in a way you didn't expect. Yeah, sorry. Is there another role? Yeah. Uh, but, you, but, 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 but. I, I yeah. would think of this one is that we had that in the transparency yesterday is secrecy. Yeah. You can, like we did in Snapman, you can you can write. They wrote a game where we all thought somebody was guilty and nobody knew for sure. So that was where the conflict lies because there was secrets. Yeah. And I can I as an organizer can write in those secrets and know that someone might know some small piece of it that can blackmail you, for instance, or whatever. Yeah, true. <coughs> yes, there is no but two. There we go. This is, a, this is not really a con for real. I just had to put in a second one, just think of one. But no. This is always the problem in a LARP, always. Players might not do what you, as an organizer, expected. I tell you to play the door, and you want to play the cat. We have a problem. The door walks away, climbs a tree, starts humping the dog. And then, yeah, the, 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 the LARP kind of falls. Welcome to my LARPs. <laughs> And it's very work heavy for you as an organizer. You have to write all these roles. This is just possible. I would say, I wouldn't, I, I, I'm quite a lazy person. I wouldn't be able to do this for more than maybe 20 players, 20 characters. Otherwise, I would be stuck. But someone said, we were talking about this yesterday, um, with, with the rest of the lecturers, and they said, yeah, the cap is somewhere around 80. I would never be able to write 80 sustainable characters for a whole LARP, but yeah, maybe. Depends on your fantasy, depends on your imagination, and depends on your will to just sit down by the computer and, and, uh, okay. and then write. It, of yeah. course, then it depends on if you have a good, if you have lots and lots of writers. Yeah. Then oh. that's the best problem. Of course. If, if, if all of you, if we decide on writing a LARP and we can create all together, yeah, true. <coughs> but then the work instead will be for the main organizer to collect, to make sure that every writer writes the same. Otherwise it would just be player created characters by the organizer. No one has no connection to anyone. So then you lose the, the pro for, for doing, putting it on the max. <coughs> so pros for the fader minimum. Yeah, the other way around. It's less work for you, pre-game work at least. But then you might end up with a, with a problem during the game that you have to uh, sort of go into the game and say, ah, come on, we need to fix these relations. This person has nothing to do during the game. And you have to work during the game instead. But it gives more freedom to the players. If I hand out a slip of paper to Eric here, telling you will play the door. Eric has no wish in playing the door. He wants to play the dog that gets humped by the, by the cat that is played by Petter. Wonderful game. He, won't be, he, he doesn't want, he don't want to do this. So then we end up with a problem with a player not playing what I had in mind. He would play something else. So 
as a, when the players create their own characters, they can play things that they find interesting. And when they do, they will, in my experience anyway, become better players. If you do something that you want to do, you will perform better. So then you will do a better role interpretation. Probably. And it gives players control of the, of the character and its relationships as a storytelling tool. If I know everything about my character, I can use it in a much more, in a bigger way. Otherwise, I would have to all the time think about what did it say in the papers? How do I have to react on this? How do I have to react on that? If it's my creation, I can just fall back on my thoughts I had when I created it, which gives me a bigger bigger the, the players the bigger control so what are the cons for the for the paid minimum yeah we come back it's just the opposites here you as the organizer have less control over the play it might end up with a bunch of different characters not wanting to relate to each other and you don't know what's going on as an organizer because you don't you haven't read through all the all the characters you might not have gotten all the characters from the players it gives you less control. And the players might end up in situations where they feel that the character has no connection to the LARP. Because we are on a spaceship now, and I've created an orc who wants to be in the forest. We might end up in a bit of a problem. No connection to the LARP. All the others speak Klingon. I speak Swedish. Tough luck. <laughs> So, if, there we go, important note then to fade a minimum. If you choose to let the players create the characters themselves, make sure that the players know what they need to know about the story. Where's the setting? What time is it? What genre is it? And what theme is it? As I said, then we won't end up with a problem of me speaking Swedish in a Klingon world. Because the players need to know almost everything about the play beforehand if they should create their own characters. It's not enough to say, yeah, we will be in a cabin during this play. It will be a, 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 a sort of a LARP school LARP. And then five minutes in, you throw in zombies. Then the player needs to know that there will be zombies five minutes in the play. Otherwise, they've created characters not usable for the LARP in itself. So it's very, very, very important that you communicate with the players what kind of LARP you as an organizer want if they should create their own, if the players should create their own characters. And also, characters and relations, just a short note on this. Role, roles in LARP is not just personality, it is also relationships to others, as I said. And players can create one part and the organizer the other part. It could be that I say, uh, this is the characters. Here, you play, we've had that. We, uh, an example of that is the boring family dinner. You got the characters. You know that you are the mom, the dad, the daughter, the son, the dog. Those are the characters. But then you have to create the relationships. <coughs> Or we could be the vice versa, which was very common in Sweden in uh, the uh, early 90s in the fantasy LARPs. The players created the characters, but then the organizer gave you relationships to others. Yeah, your sister's gonna be on the LARP too, so write in her in your character. She's gonna play this person. You better sort of make connection to her. So you can split up the character creation between the organizer and, and, and the, uh, the players to do different parts. Yeah? Uh, I had some fun doing it uh, in the order that you got handed a relationship to every other player in a small lab, and then you made a character based on what the relationship said about who you probably were. Yeah. That works well as well too. And that's a little bit like, like in, in When Our Destinies Meet, where you got some sort of, yeah, you got the, the, the slip a uh, 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 party crusher, then you know the party crusher relationship to someone or sibling to someone and then you create your character from that relationship. That can be a very interesting way to, to create characters, absolutely. 
Well, I think that's it. So, any questions? Just uh, ask them now, or hug some of, of the uh, lecturers or experts after, and keep talking characters. But I am, yeah. I think also when you write, when you have it to the maximum uh, of control and you write characters, it's it's very easy for players if they're not taking preparation seriously to like miss parts. It's not about interpreting the character wrong. It's just that they it's hard to memorize all the text because there's, yeah. there's so many details. Mm -hmm. That's also a pro for exactly for, for for turning it down to the minimum. Yeah, but, or or, or slide it down. Yeah, yeah, slide down a bit. Yeah, because then other relationships falls. Because in your, it says that your, you, you have three goals, and then you skip two of them because you haven't read it. And then it fails for Eirik. Poor Eirik here, he, he, you didn't know you were supposed to hump him. So he's nothing to do during the lock. So we'll just be laying there in the, in the grass, <laughs> waiting for you. Yeah. No, that's it's completely true. Yeah. Uh, it's more boring for Yeah, exactly. You slide it. Exactly. That's a good point. Very good. It started off on minimum, almost minimum, where you just handed the, the mom, dad, daughter, son. Then you got the secret. We're sliding up a little bit because we give you some sort of information here. Then we can, maybe next time, who knows, you will be handed even more information about the character. We slide it up a little bit. So you could say it's an easy way. It might not always be true, but the more text you receive beforehand the game, the more the slider is going up to maximum. And the final goal is to... <laughs> the final goal is to hand you a novel of 322 pages that you will read in three minutes and then play. <laughs> yeah. So you're talking actually about text. text. Um, it, like could say text. Yeah. It, we can, I, when I write LARPs, I'm, I'm a tradition LARP writer. It's a traditional LARP writer. I've never... I've, yeah, I've never is, is, but I tend to write text text, yeah, but we could go the jock way and say text, because I could send you out all kinds of stuff that you will be, build your char character around, that I, as an organizer, I know I will send you a baby on the post, <laughs> then probably you are a parent, you should take care of this baby, <laughs> so that is, you know, the, you can do other things that, that you as a player, sort of knows, so it doesn't have to be text text, but in, in, just to be clear, I, if I send you a baby on the post, you might end up thinking, yeah, I'm going to play a cannibal, I'm supposed to eat this, so then we differ in a way, because I was thinking you were going to be the parent, but you're sitting and eating the child, so. <laughs> I think that this is the most like essential part, that uh, the, uh, even text is like, yeah, it's the truth, but it's all about the interpretation also. So I think, I mean, if you sit at home and just email people the, the characters and never like meet them before they meet the, up at the game, you never know, uh, even with the text text, you never know if people actually get it or if they actually care. So I think that's kind of the, the game of my answer is to like, how do I really know that these people understand that what they're going to play today? So very true. Very, very, very true. That's the, the, the huge importance of pre-game meetings. You don't, you don't want the players to show up at the LARP exactly when it starts, unless you want to have the player part secret. At who is in the game, like we were talking about yesterday with Carolus Rex, when the Danes came in. But then the Danes had their pre-game meeting sort of deciding very clearly what to do and talking to the organizers, what should we do, how should we do it, what will happen when we get into the game. So you want, you want to have time to talk to the players beforehand, before the game, to make sure, because 
this way of communication is always, I would say, always the best way of communication. Us sitting here talking. If I want to make sure that you play the characters exactly as I, as an organizer, want you to do, then sit down. Preferably for, for as long time as possible beforehand and talk to the players one on one. Yeah, I would say don't sit down and talk. <laughs> I would say have a workshop, act, yeah. do play scenes, like if this is really important. But it's also, of course, the problem of in all games you don't have the time to do this, you don't have the time to do the three game meetings. So it's always the, the part of it. And also, like if you do, do a really impressive LARP, doesn't have to be impressive, but if you do a LARP with long characters, it's really nice if that's a rerunnable game, if, you, if that game is run several times, because then you have put in lots of work with good relations with other characters, and you can use that character again, played by someone else. Or if it's, if it's uh, like Winter Destiny Smith or, another, or Family Anderson, where it's like, okay, now we're going in the room, and now we're going to game. I mean, you still had some preparation, but of course you cannot read 10 pages. Of course, it's very obvious. But if you're also doing like a LARP in a school and they don't have time to prepare, if it's only a small game, of course you need thinner characters because you don't have time to do it that way. Exactly. But it's more, it's, it's a really good point. If you have the pre game workshop, of course, uh, there will be a workshop about that as well. And uh, like to def check out how the players portray their characters by seeing them playing them before the LARP. That's the absolutely best way. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask him maybe in your mind. There's uh, at least we have this thing uh, expectations connected to character creation. Expectations of uh, game designer and expectations of the player, and how to tune them together. Uh, sometimes when you give awards to read uh, and a lot of uh, tasks to a player, it raises his expectations and expectations of game designer. And uh, the more you, you expect from the LARP, the bigger uh, possibility that you, uh, this expectation will fail because nothing is ideal. Yeah. And the more, so also there's a double-edged sword. Of course it is. And you need to, you know, find the, yeah, I, I, there is no universal answer because there is no universal answer for that for that question. Actually, I think you just need to once again communications with the players. How you communicate? It could be pre-game workshop, or it could be sending a baby to them. I don't. But just to match, if you communicate enough with as an organizer with the players, then they know what to expect, and it sort of levels out. So. Communication is the answer, I think. And one last. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, it, is it often used um, the mixed approach to character creation? For example, uh, if you know a certain player for a long time and you discuss the same concept, uh, you know he, he understands it the same way you want everyone else to understand it, uh, you could put a uh, lever at his, in his case to the minimum. Uh, and so to some of players who are, for example, new ones, you could put to the maximum. Do you use this approach? Well, variety of uh, approaches in the same art. <laughs> you can definitely do that, and I think Pete. Yeah, no, yeah. That, that, absolutely. It's a, like a big game, and you know certain players. You can have like, yeah, I would like you to play the king. Please write the king, or like, uh, absolutely. Like you could, you could definitely do that if you know some of the players. Yeah. So just, it depends on trust. Just if you trust the player to share your vision, then you can turn it down. But if you don't know the player, don't trust the player, turn the fader up. Do, do we have time for one more, or should we? No, no this that, is just a comment. Okay, this is a quick comment. Uh, it's very easy to favor your friends, so be careful about it. Yeah, good point, good point. Well, that's, that's about uh, character creation, and, uh, and hopefully you will talk more about characters so it will be this might be clearer as well uh, during the day when we go more into characters thank you